Yeah, this your big partner Al Cam. You listen to Sweet Lation Radio with Kimmy Kim on Jerry Watch Live. Worldwide Jams, Vibes, and Radio on FavorNetwork.net. Follow them on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Elation Magazine or you can contact them at Elation Magazine at gmail.com. Elation Radio is known worldwide for lifting up people everywhere. So stay locked and we'll be right back after this news. How?
here. Back to Gospel. The second Sunday of each month, located on the corner of Belmont and the Villa. Local artists, choirs, quartets, and praise teams, alongside our host group, the Heavenly Stars of Pensacola, perform the second Sunday of each month on the corner of Belmont and the Villas. The program starts at 3 p.m. with the Dwarf Chicken Cafe on site and open for dining during this gospel event. Tickets are only $5. For more information, call us at 850-449-9866 or visit our website at www.pcolabacktogospel.org or you can look for us on YouTube at Back to Gospel, Belmont and the Villas. That's Back to Gospel. Amen, amen. Welcome to Fellowship Friday with King of Kim. This is a special, special one because I have the privilege of talking to my uncle. But before we bring on Minister Williams, Larry Williams, we're going to first um, go to the Lord in prayer. And family, just know that God is able. He would never place more on you than you can bear. He is so amazing, so amazing, so amazing. This anointed man that we're about to have a talk with, whew, God is on his life. I know because I see it, and it's amazing, so amazing. And uh, let's go to the line of prayer. And then the next um, um, topic that and the next thing, next item would be talking to my <laughs> uncle, Larry um uh, Williams, he is just an amazing. I'm just breathtaking because I love my family, and I'm like taking inventory. This is actually my first family member that I have interviewed. I need to do better. But uh, without that further ado, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for making ways out of no way. Thank you for a relationship, Father God. We thank you so much for the truth. We thank you for the life. We thank you for the way. We know that you are the only way. And because of that, we can have life more abundantly. We have love, joy, peace in our hearts. You said you just want faith and surrender our lives over to you, and you will take care of the rest. So, Father God, touch those who don't know you. Let them know that you are all they would ever need. And then once they surrender their life over to you, you will grant them their wishes because you own everything. You own everything. You own people who don't know you, people who do know you. You own all creations. You are still in control of the weather, the stars, the moon, the birds. They sing every morning on time, waking me up. (laughs) So, Father God, we're going to continue to give you honor and praise, and you're worthy, and we make this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And without further ado, we're going to bring on my uncle, my friend, Minister Larry Williams. How you doing? Hey, okay. How you doing? I'm doing good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> How about you? Well, uh, a little bit uh, uh, anxious, uh, you know. Uh, this is my first uh, time uh, on the radio in a long time, you know. I know, but you have a good story, and God is using you, and... Uh, I just love your perseverance. You are just an amazing uncle and brother in Christ, and uh, I do appreciate you, and um, and I love you. So without further ado, I know you, so we're going to allow the audience to get to know you and uh, have a wonderful fellowshipping time. So my first question is, who is Minister Williams? Oh, well... I am a man that was called by God um, before the the foundation of this earth. But like Jonas, uh, I uh, ran and ran and ran, and then I got... um, uh, tired, and I uh, start worshiping him, and his doing his work, and then uh, I got tired again, and I was tired of doing his work, and I went 
to the streets. And for 18 years, that's what I was doing, uh, doing what everything that I wanted to do. And but the call on my life, uh, it was still there. And one day. Uh, somebody uh, hit me in the head uh, um, with a, a chopping hole. Uh, they uh, they said that uh, they um, they took a part of my brains out. Um, I said I could never walk, talk, or do anything. I was gonna be like a vegetable was the rest of my life. But uh, like I said, I was like Jonah. I was running and running. And um, some way or another, um, the devil thought he had me. But uh, when I uh, was in the hospital, uh, they was getting ready to um, pull the plug on me, and some way or another, somebody uh, wanted to make sure, and they uh, discovered that I had a pus, and uh, so that that's what it, that's what happened to me, you know, and uh, I went uh, out. Uh, went to the hospital. I mean, uh, when I came out of the hospital, I was uh, I couldn't talk, or couldn't walk, or do nothing. Um, and uh, I couldn't uh, even know my name. I couldn't read my name. I couldn't. I couldn't do nothing. And um, later on. Uh, as I began to get better, I couldn't uh, walk and talk, but I could um, uh, have a discerning of a lot of things, you know. But uh, they said that um, I I was born uh, before my time. And I didn't understand they, what they mean about that, but since I uh, came back to the Lord, I began to realize what they was talking about, because a lot of things that's going on in the church world, um, I'd already experienced it, and now I can help people that is... Uh, trying to be uh, a leader in the work of the Lord, you know. Hello? Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm just listening to your testimony and how you're so willing to share your story. You have a remarkable um, overcoming the odds because what man says no, God says yes. Can nobody yeah. close the door or open the door of God? And uh, that's why when I look at you, I'm like, wow, that's God all over again. Because he shows up with mercy and grace and favor and everything. So that is a blessing. Um, you know, um, you know it, 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 didn't, uh, it didn't just happen me that the way because um, when I was um, uh, recuperating um, I began to go back uh, in the streets and and I could not do nothing but I can drive my car you know and uh, when I talk, it was like a, a, a this this like nothing, and uh, but people know me, 
and they understood what I was want to do. But I went back to the streets and gambling and everything. And one day I was night I was gambling, and um, uh, somebody was uh, taking twenty dollars off the uh, crap table, and it was my $20, and I used to be a, a bad dude, you know, and I used to carry a gun, but this time, I, when I came back, I didn't have it, but I could, I had to... The, the the notion to reach for the gun, and when I reached for the gun, I came up empty, and that was the end of my uh, crap shooting days. But then, later on that morning, uh, I was broke didn't have enough money to buy a cigarette, a, a pack of cigarettes, but I get it. I get I get enough money to do it. And then I sit down at the table, and when I was uh, uh, getting ready to, well, I light the cigarette, and then all of a sudden a voice came to me. And when it it shocked me to the point that I was doing what the uh, uh, boy said, he said, put it out. And that's what I did. And all of a sudden the boys came back to me, and he told me to uh, take every cigarette out of the back and break the field off and put it back in the pack and throw it in the garbage. Now, people, when they, when they, uh, when I say this, they they uh, look at me um, like I'm crazy. But this is was they this to me to me this is a visitation from the Lord. And when he when he told me to throw it in the garbage, um, I did it and sit down. And then all of a sudden, another voice came to me, and it was the devil saying, you're a fool. Now you ain't got no money to get another cigarette or nothing else, so what you going to do? And all of a sudden, that same voice came back and said, sin no more. So, uh, I say people say, well, you are just cap, uh, you just copying things in the scriptures. Okay, well, maybe so. But what happened that day and to this day? I stopped smoking. I start stop gambling. I start stop. Uh, smoking dope I stopped Chasing women uh, All the things That I was doing That was not according to God's scriptures That's what I did Stop doing And to this day I'm, I'm still saved And not doing The things that people They, saw, they thought that I was never, never stop, but God stopped me in one second. Where am I? That is that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness, my uncle, my uncle, and uh, wow. Despite of um. The things that you were doing, you have always been a great uncle to me. So, but um, how has that taught you? What 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 lessons 
can you give to the young people regarding well, your story? Well, uh, well, that's what I do right now. Try to um, uh, live a life uh, that will demonstrate that uh, God's love, you know, because they, they look at me uh, because what I used to be and look at me now, you know, um, I can tell them that uh, if you want to succeed, you don't want to go this way because of the condition that I am right now. Um, I can't uh, use uh, my whole right side, but I can walk, I can drive a car, I, 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 I can do a lot of things that most people can't do. But um, uh, this morning I was uh, looking at a Facebook and I was, uh, they was talking about um, um, the young boys uh, with the sagans, you know. And I wrote a, a, a thing and I said, you know, uh, if you want to keep on doing that, you do it, okay? But I'm saying you can't you can't uh, live your life doing that, and then but when you you get uh, uh, getting ready to get a job, then uh, you can't put sagging on your uh, 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 resume, you can't put nigger on your resume, you know. And and if you look at the, what it means, uh, it, 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 you know, just just stop it, you know. And and a lot of young uh, dudes uh, down here, they respect me because of what I used to be, you know. Uh, I used to, I had seen a young man yesterday, and he was, every day he walking, by, uh, walking down the street with his uh, uh, shirt on, off, and his pants uh, down. But all of a sudden, my cousin was there, and we was talking, and he came up, and I had a chance to tell him that he needed to stop doing this way, you know. And he looked at me because, you know, they called me uh, OG, you know. And I, I respect them because they called me uh, OG, you know. Hey, man, hey, man, wow. And, you know, that's what young people are about now. They want the realness. You know, you got to come correct with the young people. And, unfortunately, you have a lot of people who are in the body of Christ who can't really relate to young people, and they used to be young. That's so sad. So sad. Wow. So what what you been doing for the Lord? You've been so busy, a minister, serving the young people. What is your favorite book in the Bible and why? So what now? So what? Say it again. I'm sorry. Uh, what is your favorite book in the Bible and why? The favorite book in the Bible. Well. I know you got many. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's one uh, book that I will always refer back to. But it's not all about that book. One uh, scripture in that book, that is uh, Matthew uh, 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 
Take your time. Yeah. I love Matthew. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's, uh, Matthew uh, 6 and 33. Okay, 6 and 33. Okay. Okay. Now, you you have to you have to excuse me, okay? Oh, you're fine. Take your time. Oh, because cool. we're having a good time. Uh, uh, because um, I have to, I have to, you know, I have to, I have to back up and say something about the way I talk and the way I, uh, uh, because um, I am, uh, I'm doing something that most people in my condition, you know, but see, I don't have no condition. This is a calling by God for me to let other people like me can uh, stand up and begin to do his work. I am a product of uh, a uh, 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 disease called uh, bronchia brophasia. Okay. Um, okay. I don't. I don't. I can't. Uh, I can say a lot of things. I can remember a lot of things, but sometimes it don't. It don't click. Okay. Uh, when I talk. Uh, I can't talk when everybody else is talking. Uh, um, every time I talk, my voice is coming right back to you, to me. You know, it's like uh, my voice is echo, and 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 that's one of the reasons that I stop. Uh, taking engagement to preach because of of this, you know. And sometimes I, 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 I don't, I can't remember a lot of things, uh, but it's in me, you know. It, it, like my, one of the Amen. deacons in my Amen. church, you know, he said, if you want to, uh, know something about the Lord, come to Minister uh, Williams' house and let him uh, talk to you. And mm. that that is what I do. You know, I uh, the, the the people around here they say when they come in my home, and it's not. Um, it's a apartment, but it's like my sanctuary, you know. Uh, mm. Everything that I do is is because of the things that I wrote on these uh, walls. Uh, these uh, I got uh, 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 pictures. I mean, uh, scriptures wrote down so uh, people can. They want to uh, look at things, and that's what I do, you know, because uh, I, I, I can't, I'm a, I mean, sometimes I want to just cry, but I can't uh-huh. cry because, uh, you know, this is this is my work now, you know. Amen. Uh, uh, my disability is God's ability to draw other people, you know. Wow. I like that. Amen, amen. That's beautiful. And family, I'm telling you, my uncle is on fire for the Lord. And, whew. Oh, just amazing. I am, like, just having a good time with you because... You have inspired me to look beyond the circumstances. 
I may not say that to you because I'm a shy person. People don't really know I'm really a shy person. So I do a lot of observing and observation, and I think a lot. Those are my, you know, um, gifts that God has given me and me more. And there are times when I think about you. I just think about your endurance, and not one time have I heard you complain. And that's what's so amazing about you. Um, I look at you as a breath of hope. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, when I look at you, I look at the blessing and the favor that God has given you. You're just an amazing uncle and brother in the Lord. Um, Wow. (sighs) <sighs> this is so amazing. You know, the spirit is here. So I'm just like, I'm just moved by your testimony. I'm moved by your compassion for the Lord. I'm moved by how you love to talk to young people. What is the feeling, what is the feeling like knowing that you're living your purpose? Well, um, you know, Sometimes I feel that I am not doing enough. <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> so uh, we're on the same boat. <laughs> and, and 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 the reason that I uh, say that is because um, uh, my limitations of funds okay uh, what I what I mean by that is um, I don't have uh, enough money to really live on myself and then I, I, I find myself uh, giving uh, uh, a portion of my, um, I, I, I'll, I'll put it this way, I'm living on uh, 800, I mean $8,000 a year, and I give uh, a third of that to the church, and, 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 and I'm not only that, I'm doing things that will help the church to get, do more, you know. And um, But when you say about the, the favor of God, that's what I'm living on, the, his favor. Because sometimes when I ain't got enough, uh, my not not have enough turns into enough, you know. And I just, um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I think I'm, I'm doing his work, but I just, I just think that if I had more, then I can do more, you know. And well, you know what? Huh? You have exactly what you need because I'm reminding the word that he he gave you ah, a story to tell people. He gave you a testimony and he gave you a miracle. That's right. <laughs> you are you are a walking miracle. Um mm, mm, mm. So I I really believe in my heart that you are doing what you are supposed to be doing because um, when I see you, I see inspiration. I see empowerment from God. I see healing from God. I see so much. I see love and favor and grace and mercy because we all have done wrong. We all have done and things that that was like against God's um, will and plan on our lives. 
But just the fact that you're serving <laughs> and you not complaining something. and you want you to do what? more, that's amazing. Um, when I came back to the Lord, um, I was, uh, I was, um, my pastor, uh, he, uh, had me on his, uh, um, uh, traveling team, and we went to Memphis, and that was the first time there for me to be in that uh, that church, and there was a, a preacher. He called me out, and. He didn't know that I was uh, on a cane, and he took my cane and threw it away. But eventually, I had to uh, had to get it back. Um, but that same preacher, uh, after my my uh, pastor wanted me to start preaching, uh, but, but see, I was a preacher. In college, I was a uh, dane. I was a uh, elder in college, you know. But uh, I went on and let him license me. But that Sunday, when they gave me my license to preach, I still could not talk too well. But the same uh, preacher that was uh, preaching in Memphis, he was there to preach on my ordained service. And when he came to me, uh, he said, let me anoint your tongue. And everybody started laughing. And I opened my mouth. And he put the oil on his finger, and he put it in my mouth. About uh, three, four days later, I had was going to surgery for my hip, and there was a, a speech therapy that was there. And she asked me, she can she can I can I um work with you while you're here? And I said yes. And so she said one thing, um, you can talk but you have to do something that nobody wanna do. She told me you can pace your words. And so I began to what she said, I, I, I get get a rhythm, and I begin to talk, and I did that for almost a year and a half, and now I still got it, but I don't have to do it all the time, you know. Wow, <laughs> many stories of testimonies. This is really, you know, important that you share because it's not meant for us to keep them to ourselves. You're giving hope to those who think they are in a hopeless situation. And I really thank you for that because one of the main reasons I wanted to interview you is because I love your story. I love my uncle and he's just like an amazing person. He was an amazing person to me prior to him saying he was a bad person, but I don't see that bad person, but um, I just remember you always, you know, having a smile on your face, and you know, you, to this day, you're the same person. You still smile. What keeps oh, yeah. you <laughs> joyful? Hello. What? Keep, yeah. What keeps you joyful? Um. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> There's a scripture um, that um, I can't quote it. Uh, 
quote the scripture all the way, but um, it says something like this: um, a man that finds a wife. Uh, what is uh, it's a good thing, or whatever. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I have to be joyful because uh, if I find one, she don't want me. She don't want no uh, sour <laughs> lemon. So that's what I do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We don't. We, you're right. Women want that. You know that positive man. You're right. <laughs> She's coming. Amen. Uh, Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. I said she's coming. <laughs> but I like that because your attitude just tells a lot about who you are. And I just truly admire you. And um, you're welcome at any time to come back. And if you want to preach and anything you want, you know, family comes first. Um I do want you to pray us out, but we have two more minutes. I'm so passionate when it comes to young people. And I see a lot of them, you know, not happy or they're not living like they are royalty. What kind of encouragement or advice can you give them? Because I know you're so passionate when it comes to ministering to young people. What would you say to them? Well, I guess my uh, my pastor was uh, talking about something um, Tuesday night, and it is still in me. I mean, it's uh, on still on my mind, and and so I say this: a lot of young people. Uh, we they do a lot of things because of their friends or as a, an environment or whatever it is. But I just say this, you know. I know you. They know what non-toxic and toxic. Okay. So if you are in a relationship with people that is uh, toxic, then get away from it, you know. Don't uh, hang around with people that is not going nowhere, you know. Um, When you look at your own self, and you look at other people, and then uh, you you look at what you want to do, and and try to uh, do get around people that is above what you want to be doing, you know, and and, and shoot for the sky, not the earth, you know. I mean, uh, the ground, you know, uh, if you, uh, you, 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 if you keep on looking up, then you'll find what you're looking for. But if you stay around with people that don't want nothing but uh, the bread and sagging their pants and women that want to, uh, I mean, uh, young girls that want to just be uh, around with uh, uh, boys be, because uh, they uh, their shape and uh, things that nature, you need to leave it, leave, leave it alone. Uh, 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 get away from people that are not doing nothing in Christ, you know. 
God is beautiful. Well, my uncle, you're welcome to come back at any time. And thank you so much for doing this fellowshipping Friday. And I do uh, apologize for further delay. I had to pick up the girls. But this is really special to me because I really, really admire you and respect you. And um, thank you so much for coming on. And I'm going to give a shout-out to Jerry Royce, Live and Worldwide. Thank you so much for this platform. And family, um, if you missed the live broadcast, you can still listen to this wonderful testimony by my uncle, Minister Larry Williams. Um, He's out of Haiti, Missouri. And uh, what a testimony. It would bless you and your family. Um, If you don't mind, can you pray us out? Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everything that you have did in my life. I thank you for the things that you are doing in other people's lives that will magnify your name. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you, my um brother, my uncle, and uh, this was fun to me. You know that? <laughs> well, next time, maybe I'll be a little bit... Oh, you did wonderful. Trust uh-huh. me. No, nope, we're not taking that. You were wonderful because, let me tell you the reason why. You just helped someone else to overcome, like, you know, what you overcome. You know, the wrong crowd. We all had the wrong crowd business, but people don't believe that it's real. And if you can waste if you can save someone from wasting time, you've done your job. I'm very proud of this broadcast. I have learned so much about you. <laughs> You're so passionate about the Lord. I knew that, but I can actually feel it in my spirit. And um, I appreciate your time. So okay. we're going to sign off. And uh, I'm going to be seeing you very soon for the reunion. Okay, when I can see this, I mean, hear this. Oh, I'm going to send this to you on tomorrow. You want to hear it, and you can replay it, and I'll send it to you by Facebook. Okay, then. Okay, then. Thank you. And I love you. Okay, I love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good night.